My name is Malik Cook from the University of Colorado, and the topic today is iridocorneal endothelial syndrome, also known as ICE syndrome, in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. ICE syndrome is a group of corneal diseases that have in common corneal endothelial pathology, iris atrophy, and in many cases, secondary angle closure glaucoma. The cause is not fully understood, but has been linked inconclusively to underlying viral infection with herpes simplex virus or Epstein-Barr virus. ICE syndrome is unilateral, which is a key distinguishing feature in the differential diagnosis, and sporadic with increased prevalence in women between the ages of 20 and 50. Glaucoma develops in approximately 50% of ICE syndrome cases and is more frequent in essential iris atrophy and iris nevus syndrome, which are discussed further below. The corneal endothelium has a beaten bronze appearance on slit lamp biomicroscopy and may mimic the appearance of Fuchs corneal endothelial dystrophy. This appearance has been linked to the replacement of normal corneal endothelial cells by cells with epithelium-like features that have lost hexagonality and appear to be migratory with the ability to cross Schwalbe's line and spread over the trabecular meshwork and surface of the iris. These cells are not able to maintain the normal pumping mechanism provided by healthy corneal endothelial cells, which maintain corneal osmotic balance and clarity. As iris changes progress, slit lamp examination may reveal correctopia, which is displacement of the pupil from normal position, ectropion uvae, which is anterior exposure of the posterior pigmented part of the iris, and iris atrophy. Gonioscopy may reveal peripheral anterior synechia, or PAS. The PAS described as high and with connections going anterior to Schwalbe's line, and iris surface changes are linked to contraction of the sheets of migrating cells. You can see here in this photo several features of ICE syndrome, including correctopia. You can see here on the gonioscopic view a little bit better the ectropion uvae with the anterior movement of the posterior iris so that you can see the posterior pigmented part of the iris. And over the iris, you see contracting sheets with islands of normal iris pinched off. And this is in contrast to normal iris tissue that is adjacent to the migrating sheet that will slowly make its way towards the normal tissue. On gonioscopy, you can also see that the abnormal changes in the iris extend to the angle. And under slit lamp biomicroscopy, it can be seen to involve the trabecular meshwork with a few PAS that, again, are described as high and anterior to Schwalbe's line. Eye syndrome is categorized into three different forms, with the first being iris nevus syndrome, or kugan reese Chandler syndrome, and essential iris atrophy. Iris nevus syndrome is marked by correctopia with islands of iris nodules that form as sheets of abnormal endothelial cells over the iris contract and pinch off iris tissue. Chandler syndrome is the most common, representing 50% of cases, and manifests as prominent corneal changes described as beaten bronze as mentioned before, with eventual corneal edema and high IOP. Lastly is essential iris atrophy, which is the most striking form of ice syndrome, with significant iris stromal disruption, correctopia, and ectropian uvae. The differential diagnosis is composed of angle closure glaucoma, uveitic glaucoma, traumatic glaucoma, neovascular glaucoma, and epithelial downgrowth. Other disease processes often included in the differential include posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy, axenfeld rieger syndrome, and aniridia, all of which are distinguishable from ICE with careful clinical examination. A helpful distinction is the unilateral nature of ICE. IOP is treated with common topical pressure-lowering therapeutics similar to other forms of glaucoma. Myotics and rokinase inhibitors may not be as effective due to primary obstruction of the conventional aqueous outflow system. Trabeculectomy has not been met with great success in such cases due to closure of the sclerostomy, and laser trabeculoplasty is also poorly effective in such cases. If IOP remains poorly controlled on medical therapy, glaucoma drainage device implantation can be performed with the goal of keeping the anterior chamber tube away from the possible spread of cell sheets into the tube opening. In some cases, the disease appears to stop or even regress slightly. Less frequently, the disease is aggressive and may lead to significant glaucoma and corneal pathology with loss of vision despite diligent interventions. I invite you to visit keogt.com for an extended transcript of this video. You can visit YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram for this video and other educational videos. Thank you for your time.